Sup y'all, and welcome to Population Geography, Part 4. We're going to start off looking at medical geography, which is the study of health and disease from the geographical perspective. Now, infant mortality rate, or IMR, is a figure that describes the number of babies that die within the first year of their lives in a given population. It is an indicator that reflects the overall health of a state or region. There are more than 20 countries that still have IMRs of greater than 100, or more than one death among every 10 newborns. And the child mortality rate, the CMR, is a recording of deaths of children between the ages of 1 and 5. And this remains notably high in much of Africa and Asia. You can see in this graph with the x-axis along the mean years of schooling, and the y-axis looking at the mortality rate, that less developed nations not only have inadequate schooling, but also inadequate medical care. So let's have a little disease 101. Now, there are three different types of diseases. You have the infectious diseases, which are caused by parasites, and this accounts for about 65% of all illnesses. You have chronic diseases, also known as degenerative, which tend to occur with a longer life expectancy. And then there are the genetic or inherited diseases, which tend to occur due to damage done by chromosomes and genes. Now, the question of which kind of disease you may contract is really answered by geography. Now, for some other words, you can say that a disease is endemic or particular to a specific region. A disease can be an epidemic, which is an outbreak in a given region, or a pandemic, in which it's an outbreak across more than one region. Now, a vector is an organism that carries disease, for example, a mosquito, whereas a vehicle is a mechanical vector. By that, I mean non-living, or it can be transmitted through food, or through water, through soil, but something that is non-living. And if you have a population with many hosts of people or animals, you have a reservoir. To investigate further, we will look at vectored infectious diseases, starting off with malaria, which is an old tropical disease that kills more than 1 million people annually and infects about 300 million people. It is transmitted by an intermediary vector, in this case, a mosquito. What happens is the mosquito stings an infected person or animal, called a host, and sucks up some of the blood, which is carrying parasites. The parasites multiply in the mosquito, and when it stings again, some of the parasites are injected into that person's bloodstream where the disease multiplies and makes the person sick. No disease in human history has taken more lives than malaria. Now, other vectors include fleas, flies, worms, snails, and so on. There are many other terrible vectored infectious diseases, mostly found in tropical climates, such as yellow fever, which can cause chills, nausea, fever, muscle pain, and can make the victim jaundiced, making their eyes and skin yellowish. There is sleeping sickness, which is passed on by the tsetse fly, which can cause swelling in your lymph nodes, and this can also cause you to become very lethargic, which is why it's called sleeping sickness. There is also the West Nile virus, in which mosquitoes are the prime vector, with birds being the most commonly infected animal and serving as the prime reservoir host. Of course, there are many more. Now a quick look at non-vectored infectious diseases which are passed by direct transmission through bodily contact without the vectors, contamination of food or water, or contamination of the air itself, such as through sneezing. Now, looking at influenza, its source is often in China due to the enormous reservoir of animals and people. It usually is transmitted from birds to pigs and then from pigs to humans, but the virus survives in the air long enough to be transmitted without vectors. Back in 1918, the worst pandemic in history resulted in more than 30 million people dying worldwide due to influenza. Now, the source of AIDS, or Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, is in tropical Africa. It is caused by HIV, or the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. It is an STD, but can also be transmitted through blood transfusions, although this is highly unlikely today due to the rigorous screening. What it does is it breaks down the immune system and people can carry HIV for years without any symptoms. Back in 1980, there were around 200,000 cases reported. Today, there's estimated to be more than 30 million. One more terrible non-vectored infectious disease to talk about is cholera, 
an ancient disease that was confined to India until the beginning of the 19th century, where it spread to places like China, Japan, East Africa, and then to Mediterranean Europe. Death was horribly convulsive and would come in a matter of days, perhaps a week, and no one knew what caused the disease or how to avoid it back then. When a pandemic reached England back in the 1850s, cholera swept through the Soho district of London. Dr. Snow mapped the Soho district, marking all the area's water pumps, from which people got their water supply for home use, with a P, and marking the residents of each person who died from cholera with a dot. Hundreds of deaths occurred in that district, and as the map took shape, Snow noticed that a especially large number of those deaths clustered around the water pump on Broad Street. At the doctor's request, city authorities removed the handle from the Broad Street pump, making it impossible to get water from that pump. The result was dramatic. Almost immediately, the number of reported new cases fell to nearly zero. Snow's theory about the role of water and the spread of cholera was confirmed. Dr. Snow and his colleagues advised people to boil water, but it would be a long time before his advice reached all those who needed to know, and in any case, many people simply did not have the ability to do so. Now, a quick look at chronic diseases, which are associated with longevity of life. These are degenerative diseases, mostly found in the urbanized and industrialized cores of the world, whereas more infectious diseases occur in the periphery. Now, just looking at the United States, the top four causes of death more recently. Number four was due to stroke, number three due to lung diseases, number two was cancer, and number one was heart disease. All of these are examples of chronic diseases. And then there are genetic diseases, which are inherited, or due to gene mutations or damage to chromosomes. Now this can happen due to radiation or viruses that affect a fetus while it is developing. It's for this reason that anybody with chickenpox is supposed to stay very far away from any pregnant woman. Now one well-known example is Down syndrome, which occurs because of an extra chromosome, these are just two of the many examples of genetic diseases. Those people on that bus are being attacked by those birds. Let's go save them.